Hello biology students! Today we're going to be talking about meiosis. This is a brand new topic and it's all going to be about how to make sperm and egg cells. Alright, this is about making offspring. Let's get started. So when we talk about meiosis, we have to be very careful to not get it confused with mitosis, which was just normal cell division, which was for growth and repair, etc. So when we talk about mitosis, through this review, just be careful, we're now reviewing mitosis. During that process, we made two identical body cells, right? They were genetically identical, and they were body cells. We're now going to learn a new word for body cell called somatic cell. This is a synonym for body cell. So to summarize an example, human skin cells contain 46 chromosomes. Mitosis would make two identical somatic or body skin cells, each with the same exact 46 chromosomes. So that is mitosis. The new process we're about to learn, meiosis, is not going to be like this. It's going to be different. But before we jump into the new thing, we always want to review what we already know while learning about it in a little bit more detail. So the new information here is somatic. Okay. Let's keep going. So we're going to learn this new word called diploid. Diploid. Diploid has the prefix di, meaning two. Diploid chromosomes mean that we have two copies of every chromosome. Humans have a diploid number of chromosomes called 46. This is the normal amount. The normal amount, meaning that we have 23 chromosomes from mom and 23 chromosomes from dad. Diploid means that we would have two of the same size chromosomes. Here, there's two big ones and two little ones. That's diploid, all right? The chromosome number in that example is we have chromosome number of four. Now, sometimes we see diploid looking like this, and sometimes we see diploid looking like the X shape. Now the only difference is this is before DNA replication and this is after DNAs have replicated. All right, so don't get confused. We say that this, this is the half of a butterfly wing that will copy before we have cell division because eventually during cell division we know that these two halves of the butterfly wing will separate at the centromere and those two halves we can now call sister chromatids and they'll break apart. Okay, here the diploid we have a copy from mom here and a copy from dad here. We call those identical chromosome pairs homologous chromosomes. Okay, we have a copy from mom and we have a copy from dad. Homologous is an easy word to represent this because the prefix homo means same. Homologous chromosomes have the same genes for the same traits arranged in the same order. They're always going to be the chromosomes that look like the same size. Humans have 23 homologous chromosome pairs. Pairs meaning 23 from mom, 23 from dad for a total of 46 chromosomes but 23 homologous pairs. So for instance, this might be the chromosome that has hair color and eye color from your mom and hair color and eye color from your dad. And they combine in this pairing to decide what your hair color and eye color might be. All right, so this is diploid because we have one copy from mom and one copy from dad. All of our body cells are diploid. Okay, all of our body cells are diploid. So why do we have to have meiosis? Why can't sperm and egg cells be made through mitosis? Well, let's do an example of if meiosis did not occur. So this is our egg cell from the mom and the sperm cell from dad. You must draw this, please. And they each have 46 chromosomes in this example. All right, let's say if they were to combine, which is what happens during fertilization. <gasps> Ooh, fertilization. All right, but then we get this new cell after fertilization. We call it a zygote. That's a fertilized cell, a zygote. Um, and it has 92 chromosomes. 
Hmm. How many chromosomes did I say normal humans have? 46. Well, then can we call this a human? No. This is a problem. This is not a human anymore. <laughs> this is bad. So what ends up happening is what should the amount of chromosomes be in my sperm and my egg? We need them to be reduced, the, num the normal number, by half. Why? Well, because if I have 23 chromosomes in the egg and 23 chromosomes in my sperm, then when they combine during fertilization, I get my normal amount in my fertilized cell, my zygote, 46. And that's why we always say I have 23 from mom and I have 23 from dad. I have 23 homologous pairs. All right, to combine to be a total of 46. So meiosis is the process of somehow getting an abnormal cell that is 23, because most of my cells in my body, they're all 46. So how do I get sperm and egg to be this new half number 23? Well, before we learn about those steps, let's learn about what we call this situation with half. Okay, so half the normal number of DNA copies is what is going to be in my sex cells. Sex cells are going to have a synonym called gametes, just like how body cells are now going to be called somatic. Gametes are sex cells. And we call the normal amount diploid. We're going to call the half amount haploid. Haploid is for half, half of the diploid number. So I'm going to get one copy of each homologous pair half of diploid so haploid for humans is 23 so i might draw this example in this example i'm back to my four chromosome example where i have homologous pair of big chromosomes here the blue ones and i have homologous pair of the small ones the orange ones here one copy of each from mom and dad one copy of each from mom and dad okay diploid 2n well for haploid I would just pick one of them randomly. I only have one of the big one. I cannot call this a homologous pair anymore. And I have one of the little one. Half of the normal amount. Half. Interesting. So all sperm and eggs are haploid. Half. Gametes. All right, we made it to the end. We'll do the rex next time and learn the details of meiosis. But just so you remember, our meiosis has half of the normal amount, 23. And we call this 23 now half or haploid. All right, great job, guys.